Boy, who didn't see this one coming? I did. Actually done some videos about red flag laws because there are some states that have them already and that went horribly, horribly wrong. So prepare yourself for more to come. Hey, y'all, y'all know who it is. Y'all see the title and y'all know what it do. So uh, what we have here, well, no, this ain't failure to communicate. Look, let's just get down to it. They put it on the ballot. They put it up. They voted for him. You know, Madam Pelosi, you know, you know, she was going to uh, smack the gavel on it. But uh, it it is what it is and there's uh five republicans that actually voted with them now it's easy some people uh i'm getting the ones well it it wouldn't have made a difference because it would have went anyway because of blah skibbity blah skibbity blah skibbity blah well you can blah skibbity blah all you want like i always said and as well as many others. People get mad at rhinos, get mad at rhinos, but them rhinos get elected just like Democrats get elected. You have to vote for them for them to get in. Now, is it true? All right, the final vote was 224 to 202. With the five votes made them win? No. But what did you just tell your constituents? But look at where they're at. Anyway, let's read this part here. Then I'm going to break. Then uh, we're going to go to a page right here that uh, pretty much tells you what a red law is and how it works. You're looking at the hill.com right now. And you see what it says. The House passed a bill on Thursday to nationalize red flag laws, which seek to keep guns away from individuals deemed the threat to themselves and others. Uh, like the one I done where a disgruntled ex-wife called the police on her ex-husband that hadn't went anywhere near her in forever, had no contact whatsoever. They came up with that after the fact. Police went after him to his house. He don't know what the hell happened. Shootout ensued, killed him. The sister and uh, friends and family members came out. Oh, this is crazy. And this, that, and other, and that bit. Guess what happened to the ex-wife that called in on him and he hadn't made contact or phone or connection or nothing with her. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing happened to her. Nothing. This is where you're going, folks. You're going to have leftist libtards making false claims and calls. This is going to be, know what I see this is? Y'all know what swatting is, right? Like when uh, live people be live streaming and somebody will call in to the police that, oh, uh, somebody over there at that house and they're beating up the wife and kicking the dog and said they were going to kill everybody in sight. And the police came, my boy ABL got swatted. Anthony Brian Logan got swatted. Nothing happened. I was on the stream. I was uh, one of the uh, uh, moderators of his stream back then. I was on, on there when, when he got swatted. Nothing happened to him. But still, this but the, the, the nuisance and the embarrassment for some. Now, he wasn't embarrassed because he ain't got nothing to be embarrassed of. But you know what I'm saying. Anyway. You see what the the legislation dubbed the Federal Extreme Risk Protection Order, called a gun grab, y'all, is incrementalism, tiny baby steps. 224 to 202, two Republicans did not vote. Five Republicans, Fred Upton of Michigan, my home state, Adam Kitzner, Illinois, uh, Anthony Gonzalez, Ohio, Brian Fitzpatrick, Pennsylvania, that's where that uh that uh red flag deal went to sh- went to crap and that dude got killed. And Chris Jacobs of New York, 
bucked the GOP in voting for the measure and Democratic Rep Jared Golden of Maine broke from the party in opposing the bill. So five Republicans voted for it. One Democrat voted against it. But one out of all, but every Democrat except for one voted for it. Now, we all know that the lion's share of a certain group of people live in blue cities, blue states and or blue cities. Now, the red states, you know, you know, we certain like because I'm in a red county, I'm in a red city in a red county in a red state. So for the time being, I don't have nothing to worry about. But uh, you brothers that lawfully or legally own a firearm and that live in Detroit, that live in Chicago, that, well, I know you ain't probably ain't legally owning no gun in no New York, but, you know, I don't, you know, eh, I don't know. That live in Cincinnati, that live in Cleveland, East Cleveland, that live in, 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 in Philly, that live in Pittsburgh, and you got a you got a a a, a jilted uh, baby mama. You see where this is going, right? I don't have no baby mama. I ain't got baby mama drama. I ain't got no baby, and I ain't got no ex chick, ex baby, and no baby mamas. I ain't I ain't got none that s h i t. But you know what I'm saying. Passage of the, of the measure came one day after the House cleared a sweeping gun package that among other provisions called, um, can't, blah, blah, blah. come on, now come on, ads, get out of here. What are you doing? As soon as you scroll it, here come an ad. <sighs> Passage of the measure came one day after the House cleared a sleeping, sweeping gun package that among other provisions called for, a, called for raising the minimum age to purchase a semi-automatic weapon from 18 to 21 and banning civilian use of high-capacity magazines. This ain't going to fly. Both pieces of legislation were brought up in response to last month's mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas. The red flag bill introduced by Representative Lucy McBath, Democrat, Georgia, whose son died by gun violence, in 2012 would authorize family members and law enforcement officers to petition U.S. district courts to issue federal extreme protection orders that would temporarily prohibit individuals from purchasing firearms. Now, this McBath lady, if I remember correctly, her son got smoked at a gas station where uh, he was bumping, uh, he bumping his tunes and uh, pull up uh, rattling the spot at a gas station. And I think I, I'm quite sure I remember some, they asked him to turn it down. You know what happened? <laughs> they got into a heated debate, uh, uh, pushing it, pushing and shoving. And, and her son got killed. Her son didn't get killed by none of this stuff that they're going after. I'm telling y'all it's sleight of hand. These people will use, she's willing to use her own child as fodder, the death of her child to, to, uh, uh, to expand, uh, um, this, uh, uh, to forward their freaking ideology. You, you willing to use your dead son. Look it up. Her son was smoked after getting into an argument and a fight over his loud music and it started out first because, you know, they got the cameras and all that other stuff, but we well, ain't had no right to tell him to turn his music down. Okay. Maybe so. I don't know. I don't know if Georgia has one has, but most States have a nuisance law. Most States do. But anyway, they will use any and everything to pass their agenda. Oh, and Lucy McBath is black on top of that. Okay. And her, 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 uh, um, uh, 
son. I don't never heard anything from a father or a dad on it. So I guess she another single single baby mama, uh, uh, I guess. And she, and she done made it all way. And she's a damn state representative. But anyway, <sighs> you uh, issue federal extreme protection order. Blah, blah, blah. Red flag laws exist already exist in 19 states and the district of Columbia. Uh, uh, Richard Blumenthal and Lindsey Graham, Graham, Nisty, Amnesty Gramnesty introduced a companion bill in 2018. I'm like, man, South Carolina, that's when I knew y'all it went uh, purple and on y'all way to blue when y'all can't even get rid of freaking Lindsey Graham. And Lindsey Graham is worthless as the day is long. I hate rhinos, man. Anyway. The Senate has been engaged in bipartisan gun negotiations. I ain't negotiating with, I don't negotiate with terrorists following the pair of mass shootings, but the chamber has not yet introduced and ain't none of these bills would have done nothing. Wouldn't have stopped. Neither one of them, neither one of them, nothing. Wouldn't even have came close. Um, red flag laws, however, have, have emerged as a consensus point among members of both, both parties. The orders can either be short term lasting for a maximum of 14 days and issue without a hearing issue without a hearing. Listen to the, listen to me, y'all activists, judges, activists, DAs. That's all you let that roll around in your head. You, you, man, y'all going to have to put your head on a swivel of where you live at and who you voting for. But it don't matter because like we always say that uh, 90 plus percent of the Negroes vert, vote Democrat anyway. So I just hope they keep that that crap in the Democrat places and keep that keep that Democrat vote out of our red places. We like it like this. That's why we vote the way we do. Y'all like it like that. That's the way. That's why y'all vote the way y'all do. So y'all keep y'all blue there and let us keep our red here. But no, that's not the way they go. They want to drag they blue over to your red. And how they get you is they first turn it purple. Then uh, everybody get used to that numb feeling. And that's when they go in for the kill. Uh, da, 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 remaining in existence for 180 day. Okay, damn lasting for a maximum of 14 days in issue without a hearing or long-term remaining in existence for 180 days and requiring a hearing to be issued. Petitioners must provide evidence uh, that the individual of concern poses an Im imminent risk to themselves or others by purchasing, possessing, or receiving firearms or ammunition. Oh, like the guy that, 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 that y'all went after and he'd had them guns for years on end. And hadn't didn't have nothing on the books on him. Nothing. Didn't go anywhere near him, near her. She wasn't there. He wasn't over near her. They ain't even live in the same freaking city. What about him? Well, Nick, he's only one person. That you sh you can't hold up a whole bill over one person. Oh, but you can pass a bill over two people that went crazy. Well, that's different. Yeah. Yeah, sure is. Sure is. If the court determines that an extreme risk protection order is necessary, individuals subject to the uh, to the measure must sur must surrender their firearms and ammunition and are barred from purchasing or possessing firearms during the duration of the order. See, you don't have to prove they don't have to prove that you're a danger to anyone. The only thing somebody got to do is make the call and say that they feel threatened by you having something. Then they will come and take your stuff while they figure out whether uh, they'll give this any cretins or not. And if you resist, you'll end up like that one guy did, the one that I, I'm talking about in the video that I did, uh, what, three, four years ago? They don't have, look, they don't have to prove you done something. They coming for you. And then, well, let's see if we can find anything where we can keep this person's 
firearms and ammunition. And if they can, they will. And, and what they say, well, we found something. Yeah. You look like you cuckoo for cocoa puffs on this. You can't go and purchase another one. Huh? You see, I mean, read it. The bill also allocates grant funding to states. Here we go. They put their hands in your pocket in an effort to bolster implementation of state extreme risk laws that are already on the books and to urge more states to enact such, such measures. Additionally, the legislation requires that law enforcement is trained to safely and partially and effectively use extreme risk protection orders. Basically, they're going to knock on your door. They're going to have that paper in their hand from a judge that signed it and you giving up your shit. That's it. They got the right to come ramble through your house. We heard you got a this and a that and a that and a that. Oh, and this ain't this ain't just against long guns, y'all. Y'all can find this bill. This ain't just against long guns. This is against any firearm that you have. Any firearm and all ammunition. So your little 22, your little 22 pea shooter that you used to shoot snakes in the backyard? Nope. Give it up, clown. During the debate on the House floor Thursday, Representative Jerry Nadler, a uh, Democrat New York, tied the legislation to the recent spate of shootings. I am reading his crap. He can go fly a kite. Uh, McBath on Thursday pointed to her son Jordan's death. Yeah, that he had something to do with. Oh, there it go. Fatally shot at a gas station. I knew it. I knew it was a gas. I knew it was something. I knew it was a gas station during an argument regarding the vol- volume of the music uh, he was playing. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, your son died over ignorance, two ignorant people, one ignorant, but one ignorant trumped the other ignorant. So there you go. Ignorant, just ignorant, ignorant as the day is long. Um, and that's why in the decades since my son was taken from me by a man with a gun simply for playing loud music. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Republicans, however, were largely against the measure. Minority whip Steve Scalise sent a memo to the House GOP offices on Wednesday, urging them to vote against the legislation. Well, I say the Democrats outnumber the Republicans. That's it. That, that's just the way it is. That's how voting works. Well, when the hell did they get control of the house? When, uh, the, oh boy, y'all, y'all are not paying attention. His memo said the bill uses overly broad language uh, related to ex parte extreme risk protection orders that cast aside individuals' rights due to process and tramples on America's Second Amendment rights. It sure does. GOP leadership also knocked Democrats for advancing poorly crafted legislation. That was intentionally crafted legislation, sir. It wasn't poorly. It was intentionally crafted legislation focused on firearm confiscation and undermining the Constitution, constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens rather than working with the Republicans to find common ground. No, that's not how it works, sir, and you know that to find common ground solutions to secure schools and address address the root cause of gun violence. Representative Debbie Lesko objected to the bill during the debate on Thursday, suggesting that the orders could be used as retaliatory measure measures from former spouses. I'm t- and this is a woman. I'm telling y'all, it happened already. They shot and killed him. They shot and killed them, and nothing happened to that lady. Nothing. And the whole story went away. I'm surprised they ain't took my video down. I better go check because I I don't even go back and check my stuff. I better make sure it's still there. The bill uh, takes away due process from law-abiding citizens. Can you imagine if you had a disgruntled ex or somebody who hates you because of your political views? And they go to a judge and say, oh, this person is dangerous. And that judge would take away your guns. And that's exactly what happened. And this is a woman. She knows she know how chicks get down. She a chick. Hell, I ain't a chick and I know how chicks get down. Representative Thomas Massey, Republican Kentucky, during the debate discounted the effectiveness of the red flag bill 
and instead pushed for measures to address mental health, a common talking point with the GOP. Great. Anyway, look, this ain't got nothing to do with the school shooting. This don't have anything to do with the shooting in Buffalo. We already know that both of these shooting incidents are, no pun intended, are full of holes. The holes don't line up. Nothing's nothing fits on neither one of these. The holes don't line up. There's people y'all been calling us tinfoil hatters and crazy and oh they wouldn't kill people to pet forward an agenda. You have lost your freaking mind. And it slaps you in the face. It's live and in living color. And yet you still deny it. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, uh, swim up the river of denial now. Um, how do red flag gun laws work? We just hit the bullet points. I'll put the link to this one. This is from finelaw.com. This is legal ease. This is slick at the mouth legal talk. Red flag laws allow family members or law enforcement to petition a court, a court to order the temporary removal. You know, I've I've never heard of anybody getting their firearms back. I haven't. If y'all have, please put it in the comment section. Uh, temporary removal of firearms from a troubled person. The court determines if the person is at serious risk of harming themselves or others with a gun, and if so temporarily orders that person to surrender the firearm what was that movie with tom uh cruz what was the name of that movie where they was like in the future and he was a cop and like they could see the future like and they would come and come and get you before you do the crime because it was oh man what was the name of that damn movie anyway i know somebody uh throw it in the comment section for me uh, our red flag laws, constitutional second amendment protects individual rights to be, although arguably the framers of the constitution were thinking about muskets. Oh, bullshit. See, here we go with this. Okay. If the constitution's framer were thinking about muskets and not today's high powered rifles, were they thinking of the internet and were they thinking about the internet when they put uh first, um, uh, the first amendment rights in? So the First Amendment applies to the Internet that there was no such thing, but it shouldn't apply to rifles because they was talking about muskets. It has nothing to do about the gun. It has to do about the stance and the right to carry and protect yourself, your family, and your property. Has nothing to do with muskets. I guess they got libtards working at freaking fine law, too. When the government passes a law, it must not violate the constitutional rights of the citizens. Well, it just did. Laws that may infringe on fundamental rights, such as the right to own a gun, are subject to strict scrutiny. Right. To uphold a regulation under the strict scrutiny analysis, the law must have a compelling state interest and be narrowly tailored to achieve the interest. Okay, whatever. How does an extreme uh, risk order work? Family member presents evidence that an individual, yeah, like he was talking mean to me, uh, possesses a serious threat of harm to themselves and others. A judge may issue a short-term order to remove the firearm from the individual. Then that individual can submit evidence of why they believe the extreme. Okay, so you, so wait a minute. So this grown old baby mama, or ex-wife or whatever the f say uh, says that I think you know you are serious you he posed a serious threat harm to himself or others because I heard him say that he was gonna do something to himself. Okay, they turn it to a judge, judge uh 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 give the order to have your firearm removed from you, and then you you that the, the, you got to submit evidence as to why it's unwarranted 
They can have a lawyer represent. So wait a minute. So you got to get a lawyer. You got to come out of pocket. What if they ain't got that kind of money? Y'all see where this is going, right? They ain't got to prove that you that you're a danger. You're got to prove that you're not. Huh? Can I petition my state? Man, you see where this is going. Watch. This ain't this is just the beginning. 19 states have extreme risk laws. Okay, well, everybody got it now. So, I mean, because this, well, of course, this was before the today's vote. So, ain't no need of us going down the list because now that's everybody. Will there be a federal red flag law? Uh, uh, yes, uh, because when y'all made this, it was no. But as of today, that answer is yes. Y'all can um, uh, read it, read it and weep. Uh, rate, comment, share, subscribe. Bye.